Good morning. Thank you again for joining me again today. We'll be looking at facilities and how we can make additions to our school. For this particular assignment, we were told to either do a new renovation or an addition. Based on the current statistics and data here at the school, I decided to do an addition. Um, the addition I decided to do is a little bit different. I would say it, may, it can enhance the learning for the students, but in a different way. We don't need any additional classrooms right now at Callaway Smith Middle School because we have 82,144 square feet of school. For the past few years, our enrollment has dropped drastically. We normally have 650 to 680 students. However, we are down to 375, that is our current enrollment. And so for the last couple of years, central office kept telling us that they were gonna cut our faculty and staff and they did not. However, this school year, they have cut us in half. So with that being said, we have eight or more classrooms that are currently empty space and not being used. So for this particular assignment, I decided to do an addition. And the addition that I would like to do is add on an auditorium, a gaming and an incentive room for the students, as well as a parenting room for parents, as well as for community people to come in and for us to form different partnerships with these people. All right, so when we look at our proposed addition for the school, we have an entrance here, and you go to the right to get to the gaming and center room, as well as the pantry room, and the auditorium will be to the left. In addition, there will be exits at the back on both sides, okay, for safety purpose in case of fire, and our restrooms will be located in the center. All right, so the building site, when we're talking about site, there are different things that you have to consider. You have to consider if, if the ground is level, if it's hazardous materials in the community, so on and so forth. Well, the thing about this is we have enough land here at Callaway Smith where we can do the addition here at the school and it will not interfere with the outdoor space for the children or the learning spaces outside. So the advantages of building it here on site is one, we're not having to spend any more money to purchase any more land. We have the land available. So therefore the different tests and things that have to be done have already been done when they built this school. So the ground is level, it's free of vegetation, there's plenty of space, and again, it's gonna be no additional cost to the school. So the addition will be done here at Callaway Smith. All right, structure and maintainability. When we add this addition to this school, it will be built with the same materials that were built before, which is the same red brick. The inside of school uses center block and things of that nature. In order to maintain this facility, we learned this semester that you are supposed to have a certain number of custodians depending on the square footage of the building. So with this addition, we would need to hire an additional custodian in order to make sure that the facilities are maintained and kept clean in the manner that they should be kept clean. Safety. In order to make sure this building is safe, in order for students, faculty, and staff to transition from one building to the next, we will have a covered walkway. In addition, we will install cameras for surveillance purposes. The doors, of course, will, automat will automatically lock. In addition, we will have fire alarm systems, fire extinguishers, and AED, and as well as our exit signs will be placed up around the school or around where the doors are so that people can know where to enter and to exit in case of an emergency or a fire. In addition, we will have 24-7 surveillance. Also, we will have placed at the different doors the procedures for fire exit, um, safety drills, tornado drills, as well as active shooter drills. In addition, these are things that we will go over with our faculty, our staff, and our students. However, when people and guests come in, those things will be visible so they can know what to do in case of an emergency to make sure that everyone is safe. Currently, we have a security guard at our school, and so the security guard will be required to walk frequently just to check the doors, make sure things are locked, and make sure things are in place at the school. In addition, school maps are placed at the doors and throughout the buildings to let people know, okay, this is where you are, and this is how you exit or move in case of an emergency. So we will do everything we can to make sure that the building is safe for learning as well as when people need to enter and exit and the different things that they need to know. So what type of furniture will be in our parenting room? Well, it's a parenting room. So in a parenting room, of course, we'll have a conference table, conference chairs, places that allow for storage, as well as an area for refreshments. Again, this is our parenting 
room as well as the room that we will use to invite people in from the community, different stakeholders, people that we form partnerships with and things of that nature. So the room will be an, an inviting space for them to come into. When we start talking about partnerships and things of that nature, as well as the parents, this room will be a safe place for our parents. We have several parents who are trying to get GEDs, who are trying to learn. Those resources will be available to them. In addition, our Title I facilitator, she serves as our parenting person, and she informs parents of job opportunities, different classes, and things of that nature. So this room will serve as a safe space and will have different resources for our parents. And you say, well, how is a parenting room and a partnership room, um, how does that help education? Well, research shows that students who parents stay involved in school have better attendance, they behave better, their grades are better. So this room will help. It will bring the parents in. It's a safe place. If the parents are involved, most of the time the students behave better and they perform better academically. So by having this room and allowing parents to come in, teaching them how they can help their children, teaching them how to log on to Schoology and things of that nature. If we can help the parents, the parents will help us, as well as form those partnerships with different people in the community. When building the auditorium, and I had the opportunity to visit someone's auditor auditorium recently, and I learned a couple more things, but of course we have recess lighting throughout the auditorium as well as stage lights. In addition, we will have up light. These lights will be able to be controlled and be able to, you know, be able to be brighter or dim depending on what's going on. We'll have the normal auditorium seating as well as the curtains. In addition, a surround sound system. And when dealing with the system, we will have one that is manageable, one that's easy to use. A lot of times people don't want to build auditoriums because they say it's confusing. However, we're going to make sure that this is user friendly for everyone. In addition, we'll have a large LCD projector and screen. Oftentimes people say, well, auditoriums are just large empty spaces. There's no need to have an auditorium. However, children, like for example, the teachers teach in the classroom, sometimes you may want to go to the auditorium, get the students up, get them active and get them involved. So it is, it is good to have an auditorium. So this is the anticipated look of the auditorium. Of course, you have your seating, your LCD projector, of the screen up front with your projector, your sound system and things will be in the back. If you notice, there's recess lighting, and then there's also stage light that can be bright and can be dim. How does this help support academics? It can be used for assemblies, PTA meetings, graduation, theater arts, class lectures. Again, the teacher may say, well, today we're going to go to the auditorium and learn. Students like to change the environment, and it helps them with learning. Um, you can use it to show movies or incentives as well as concerts. Our band does a very good job with holding concerts. If we were to able to have an auditorium to have that in, that would be a more welcoming environment for the community and for the parents when they come in and see their children perform. So an auditorium, oftentimes people try to look at as a waste of space. However, it does have importance as far as students in their education. All right, and finally, our student center. We would like to have a student center. Oftentimes, and it's <laughs> in the new generation, we were, we were actually having to bribe our children to learn. And we spend a lot of money trying to get people to come out with game trucks, so on and so forth, and trying to get people to donate. If we're able to build these things and, and have it at the school, that would help. So things that I would like to have in this facility would be a foosball table, air hockey, this right here, table tennis, and the table tennis can um, convert to a pool table, cornhole toss, basketball arcade game, Pac-Man. And another thing I learned here recently in this class from business school, I did not know that esports was actually a sport now. So, and we know children like to play games, so these are some of the things that would be in that student center built for the students. The type of furniture, research shows that the colors and the seating that the children sit in that, they, that helps with learning as well. So the room will be painted one of these warm, neutral colors. We'll put down some um, vinyl flooring that will have nice window treatments. And they will have furniture that one would let them sit like this and they have plugs so they can plug with their phone and have free time. Or they can sit in a group with their friends and socialize. Educational ad advocacy. 
children like incentives. And unfortunately, some of our children nowadays, they don't want to just come to school and learn. So we have to provide them with an incentive. They work for incentives. They work for treats. They work for candy. They work to play games. They work for free time. So research says once they show that half of the students that receive incentives improve 10 to 20% on their test scores. So some people may say, well, a student center is a waste of time. It's not a waste of time. If we want our children to perform, unfortunately we're in a day and age where we have to provide them with some type of incentive. They will work. In order for us to make sure our children are performing how we want them to perform, I believe this student center would be adequate and would be important and vital to their academic performance. These are the references from what I use. Are there any questions? Any questions? Thank you so much for joining us today.